red flags when dating a divorced man and what flags to look for, whether or not this person is ready to date again. Thank you so much for joining us again on Second Act TV. Once again, I want to welcome back Robert Manny, the host of Guys Guy Radio and TV and the author of the Guys Guys Guide to Love. Robert, as always, thanks so much for being here. My pleasure, Silka. Good to see you again. Robert, today I want to ask you about something that uh, we haven't quite talked about before, and that is red flags when dating a divorced man and what flags to look for, whether or not this person is ready to date again. And incidentally, uh, all these points work for women as well. We can, we can really relate that. But for the purposes of today's segment, let's talk about the seven relationship red flags dating a divorced man. That sounds good. Uh, can I make one <laughs> caveat just right up front? Because I Absolutely. think it's an important one. Absolutely. I've heard, and I actually saw a thing online recently about you know, is there what's wrong with a guy who isn't married and he's over 50 and he's never been married? And that's part of this. Maybe that's a totally separate discussion. But mm -hmm. I, I was over 50 when I got married and yeah. I was in some long term relationships. I also got the questions about how come you've never been married? And yeah. I don't know if anybody accepted my answer, but I wouldn't completely dismiss a guy who's never been married. You know, somebody, a guy who's been divorced, that means they've been in a relationship and it didn't work and right. they need to be partially accountable for that. Yeah, that's one of the points here, actually. And, and you're absolutely right. I, I've never understood that either, is uh, what, what is better, never having been married or having been divorced six times? <laughs> right. You know, so it really... Right. Exactly. And, and, and I guess that's really the, the conversation that, that we should preface here is that everybody's different. Uh, what, what might be in common or, or, or we can speak to generally is some relationship, uh, unhealthy relationship habits or something that you're seeing that to say, you know what, let's not go down this way. So, so let's talk about that. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one here, according to an article that, uh, of course, I, I found, bad mouthing your ex. Now we, we've talked about that a million times that that is, you know, especially on first dates, just you don't talk bad about your ex, but it goes deeper than that. It's, it's, it's not just talking bad about your ex, but it's how often do you bring it up? Is it always on your mind, et cetera? Talk to me about that. It's a slippery slope because you're going to get asked questions invariably about why didn't your relationship work out? If everything was all peachy keen, you'd probably still be together. So there obviously had to be some issues. I think mm -hmm. what you need to do if you're a guy and if you're a woman, as uh, you're listening to what he has to say is, is he just negative down on his, his partner? Or it, it, is, is there something fundamentally wrong with him? Or does he not like women? Or is he obsessed with the relationship and frustrated that it didn't work out? I'm going to have to keep listening to this all the time and have comparisons. So you have to, I would suggest anybody in this situation needs to listen really carefully as to where the other person is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, they're going to have to mention, well, we didn't work out because maybe she cheated on him. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's not, is that his fault? Maybe it's his fault because maybe he was cheating on her or maybe he... Mm -hmm was doing something that led her to say, I got to find something someplace else. So it all has to be put into context. It all has to be taken and uh, how it relates to everything else about who this guy is, what the relationship's all about. Yeah, exactly. No, I totally agree. And it's really about, you know, how often does it come up and what kind of emotions is still behind it, especially right. if it's a recent divorce. And let's define recent by like a year to even two years. I, I consider that yeah. that recent. So that, yeah, bad mouthing your ex, big, big red flag uh, if, if you're constantly hearing it. You alluded uh, to this one just uh, a moment ago, bad mouthing women in general, that there's a lot of men and, and we get comments like this on the on this channel. Actually, I won't say quite frequently, but we certainly have gotten our share. Men who just don't like women. You know, they now all women are the devil because of how 
how they were hurt in the relationship. And that that's something that, yeah, if you see that, that that's a big red flag. Okay. I think it's a, it's a door that swings both ways uh, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of women who are like, they're done with guys because yes. of, you know, lo lo dishonesty and other things. Uh, and so it's, it's both ways. I think everybody's got to, you, you know, you can't, half the world is female and half the world is male in the, in the uh, historical definitions, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, so if you're going to trash women, uh, you know, and you want to find a, a woman partner, you're in trouble because uh, if you're that negative on it, maybe you need to take a step back and say, mm -hmm. what is it about me? I have to work on yeah. to, uh, to assuage those feelings I have, because it's about you. It's not about the entire population of women. So that person is angry, obviously, and that's a red flag. So that's yeah. not a good thing. Right. And then if, if the woman, if you see this, you know, if, if it will repeatedly or you have sarcasm and that sort of thing, right. it kind of it indicates that he's just looking to be right, that that you're going to screw up somehow. <laughs> And then now he's right that all women yeah. are this way. So the whole all women, the whole all men, again, yeah. it, this, this swings both ways, is, is a red flag. There, there's something Absolutely. there that still, that still needs to be healed. So that good advice here. You alluded to this right up front, uh, refusing to take responsibility. That yeah. if somebody is, and I say somebody, again, this goes for both men and women, let's talk about men, though, is it, it was all her fault. You know, I, I'm not responsible for this, just not taking any part of why the marriage split up. Yeah, I, that's a big issue because listen, everything's connected. And as they say, it does take two to tango. So if somebody did something, maybe it was a reaction to something you did and you, maybe something you're not even aware of, but mm -hmm. those are red flags in that you, you have to be, you have to be self-aware if you wanna mm -hmm. be a good partner. It's, it, it's, a, it's a problem because it's a sign of maturity. And it's also, you're not being realistic because, you know, if you're adults, people make mistakes. How do mm -hmm. you, how to react to that? You can't tell anybody how to, you can't make somebody feel a certain way. That's their choice, but you right. can do things that are going to trigger them. And if you're in a relationship over time, you should be aware of, okay, what are the things I need to be careful about in terms of bringing up certain topics? That's just human nature. So yeah. I think yeah. we all have to be accountable. Well, and, and if somebody doesn't take any responsibility, that that pretty much means the red flag to me there is that whatever I'm going to do is going to be my fault, whatever happens. I mean, you're, you're always going to get blamed for something. I think it, all, it also uh, can point to some narcissistic tendencies, which you absolutely you know, want to want to stay away from. It's never, never their fault. So, yeah, big, big, big red flag. Uh, here's another a good one, forcing you to go incognito that, you know, it's especially again, we're talking recent divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, so right away, you know, you don't want to you know, jump into the family and meet kids, meet whatever right away. But if after a while you find yourself being separated from his friends, from his family, you're meeting at different places. There's definitely reason to be concerned. Yeah. I mean, at a certain point, you're, you're, if you're in the market to meet somebody and you're with somebody after a certain period of time, and it's different for every, in every situation, there should be a coming to terms in terms of, okay, so we're together, we can let our friends know or whatever, mm -hmm. but why else, why would you be hiding it? At a certain point, if the person wants to be with you, they should be happy and mm -hmm. proud to show you off. They want you to meet. They want to introduce you to their friends. Right. They want to, at a certain point, right. I know family is family and his kids and all of that. And I went through a situation, I was dating somebody and I met her sons and I'm like, these guys, like they hated me <laughs> just because I was uh, uh, like whoever. It wasn't about yeah. me because I didn't have enough exposure to them to give mm -hmm. them a reason to, to yeah. hate me. But I'm like, one was nice and another one was like really cold. I'm like, hey, Okay, I, I get it. So I figured mm -hmm. I just stay, stayed away yeah. from the family thing. And then that that can come back and bite you because they're like, well, why doesn't he come around? <laughs> well, you got to be friendly to have him come around. Well, you brought up another really good point, which is the whole kids thing. You know, it doesn't matter how old they are. Even adult children can it's absolutely adults, yeah. stay, uh, you know, can ruin a new relationship, yeah. especially the recently divorced. So yeah. yeah, again, big, big red flag. If you're being kept at a distance and it just doesn't seem right, 
you have a right to wonder why and 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 to ask so absolutely yeah the well and then again gosh you always keep bringing up the points uh before so you must have done this before <laughs> <laughs> but insisting on too much too soon the opposite of what we just said that if all of a sudden you know after one week you know you're you're invited to thanksgiving dinner or you're just <laughs> all of a sudden you've you've like been placed into that empty spot in his life. And again, women do that too. But I think men actually sometimes do that more. And we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But all of a sudden, you're, re, you're replaced. You're, you're, you, you're fit a, um, well, an empty spot. You know, rebound woman, right? Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it happens a lot. And I think I've heard from a lot of women that guys will, you know, they go on an online dating site and they meet the guy and he wants to take them out to dinner right out of the gate, be it forever mm -hmm. meeting into a nice restaurant and then sees them. And it's like, you're, I'm going to marry you or like puts a lot of pressure on them way too early, mm -hmm. maybe because they don't want to go through the whole dating dance or, or whatever. But that's that's not a good sign. Um, it's it's you're not a pawn in a, in a in a in a chess game. You want the person to take the time to get to know you and really do their due diligence because. That's not a that's not a good sign of somebody who's really doing the right prospecting and qualifications in terms of is this somebody that I want to be with? You, you want to have a feeling out pr process. I'm not saying how long it should be. It's different for everybody, but you don't want to just it's not plug and play when you're dealing with human beings. That's funny. Plug and play. And I, I think women in particular, uh, you know, you can be charmed by that. Wow. He really he fell for me. He really yeah. he really oh, likes yeah. me, especially those of us who come out of an unhappy marriage. I mean, let's face it. Dating at this age, pretty much all of us or many of us are divorced. So divorce is, you know, it's all over mm -hmm. the place. Again, it's it's how recent and how much is it still in your head that we want right. to uh, you know, talk about today. But um, yeah, the love bomb. I think, you know, again, big red flag. If, if you were all of a sudden the love of his life, I, I, I would question right. that. So something is not quite, not quite. Before right the entree there. even comes, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I kind of had that happen to me once and it's, it's just, it's creepy. It's, it's really yeah. creepy. <laughs> Here's another one saying, I don't deserve you. Now there's right. something about, you know, being self-deprecating and, and, and maybe even meaning that as some sort of compliment, my God, you know, you are wonderful. God, I just don't deserve you. Uh, okay. But if you actually mean that <laughs> and you keep saying it, oh, you're just, and people do this and it's, it's, it's actually a big thing. This is a, this is a red flag. Maybe believe them. What are they hiding? What are they worried that you're going to find out? I think you just answered the question uh, with, with I, I, I agree with you completely. It's like, don't put you, you know, you can have like a self-deprecating is, is a nice thing in a, in a way, but it, if it's, if it's casual, but if it's mm -hmm. something like I'm not, uh, I'm not worthy, well, it's, I'm not worthy. Yeah. Like, okay, what are we getting into here? Mm -hmm. You know, because the next thing, you know, you know, these guys wearing a, who knows? I don't want to go there, but it's like it could become into like a little kinky type of situation there. I'm not worthy. That's it's, funny. That's who funny. knows? I don't know. But uh, you don't want a, somebody who has so low. It's low self-esteem. Self -esteem. You're saying mm -hmm. you have to you have to say, you know, are you worthy of me? You have to have that attitude going mm -hmm. into a new relationship, not in a way where you're judging, but yeah. you have to have self-esteem because right. You know, in this world, you better have self-esteem or you're going to get, because everybody, we all get whacked around by this crazy place we call Earth now. Right. And it's our civilization and culture. It's like, it's tough. So you better have some type of self, um, self-assurance and believe yeah. in who you are, no, particularly it, with relationships, because it can be really cold. Well, yeah. And you don't want to, as, as the woman or the part, you know, again, we're talking about men now, uh, you don't want to be going into a situation where you're constantly have to prop somebody up because right. really that's what that that is it's fishing for compliments for lack of a better term you know oh, i'm not worthy well yes you are why would you say that <laughs> oh that gets old really really oh, fast and apparently it's a it's a thing because this is written about a lot finally and i this is this is a huge one punishing you for the mistakes of his ex such as, you know, if, if he was cheated on, you know, he's co constantly questioning what you're doing when, uh, you know, when you're not with him. Or there's always something, something in the back of his head to where if you do even something remotely like his ex or, or something is constantly triggered and you're paying for her mistakes. 
that's something to listen to. Absolutely. I think out of all the points, this is the one that's a, the biggest red flag because right. that's a tough one to get past yeah. because that means the other person has work to do on themselves. And if they haven't done that work, you're going to be the punching bag and you're going to be guilty for the sins of somebody else. And that's right. not showing you respect. And that's not the other person going into a new relationship with mm -hmm. an open mind and more importantly, an open heart in mm -hmm. terms of how you want to be, you know, in appreciated, ingratiated, welcomed into their yeah. world, if you will. But if, they, if you're going to be guilty of the sins of their ex, that's a bad sign. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of people do it. A lot of people do yeah. it. And I, I will even point at myself, you know, like you said, this, go, this swings both ways. But because I was in a, in a marriage where he cheated on me for forever, uh, that was hard to get over. That was hard to get past. And you are always questioning, uh, sure. you know, what, what's the well, is he doing? Is he doing something? And, and it's horrible. And that's something I had to work on and I have worked on. And, and yeah, you, you don't want to put somebody in that situation where they're paying for somebody Agreed. else's mistake. So mm -hmm. anyway, the this is good stuff to think about because again, you're going to date somebody. If you're out dating, if you're looking for a new love after 50, the high likelihood you're going to be dating somebody who's divorced. Ideally, somebody who's been divorced for a while and has processed all this. Uh, but more, more than likely, it'll be a recent divorce. And that's not necessarily a bad thing if you know what to what, what to look for. Robert, I'll throw it to you to close us out here. You know, not all divorces are ugly. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I remember when I met my wife, she was separated. And I mm -hmm. had this rule saying mm -hmm. no separated women. They have to be completely, you know, divorced. Yeah. And of course I said, well, I made up the rule. I broke the rule. Now we've been <laughs> married for over a decade. And it was an amicable divorce she had with her, her ex. And she mm -hmm. was like, we should all get together and <laughs> hang out. And I'm like, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. There, every situation is different, but I mm -hmm. think instead of always looking for red flags, which we often mm -hmm. do, how about looking for green lights? You know, I what, like what how can we, how can we make this thing work? What do you know, knowing that this person, everybody's going to be a little bit different than your past partner, maybe they'll have some consistencies, but what's something I can do to make this work? What's something I can work on to be a better partner and how see the good in this person? Because I'm sure they have traits that your the ex might not have had good and bad, but let's let's focus on and accentuate the positive. I think that's I a good that. way to look at it. I love that. That may, would make a great title uh, for another segment. <laughs> Robert, thank you so much. As always, I will link to all of your information. Please tune into Robert's radio show. The link will be below in the show notes. Guys, guys, radio and TV right here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and do pick up a copy of the book. Great read, talking to the women especially. <laughs> so Robert, thank you. And I look so forward to another conversation with you on Second Act TV. Me too. No pun intended. Thank you, Silke. <laughs>